All right, so hoping for multiple luck triggers on the first turn is how this fight works. Let's have Kieris attack Blessing Lena and hope for a Sharon debuff. Didn't happen, restart. Tiaris is going to start things off with an attack. That way, she has an Ulver Staff, as well as Sharon. She has two chances to reduce Nidhogg, or to increase Nidhogg's damage taken. Neither kicked in. I think I'm screwed at this point. But I'll continue. Well, there's the Warlock's Hood debuff at least. Now if Lana can apply the other debuff, I have a chance. Nope, wasn't enough, unfortunately. So this is another failed run, I think. But I'll follow up with everyone to attack just to see. And you can see, tons of luck triggers are required for me to kill Nidhogg. So let's follow up with Windblade from Liana. Come on, Warlock's Hood. There we go. So now we do have a magic defense reduction of 30% and I can have everyone else attack. So, Liana. Let's also have Narm toss out Deadeye. Dark Reaper from Rachel. And then Luna. Hey everyone, this is Nitro. So it's the very last day of the Nidhogg battle for the first time and I thought I would jump in and try to pick up a few of the achievements for this fight. Specifically, the ones I really want to aim for is Poison Strike, Blood, uh, sorry, Poison Blood Strike Phase 2, Poison St Blood Strike Phase 3, and I don't think I can get the Poison uh, Blood Strike Phase 4, but definitely I think I can do the first two, right? To do so, it says advance to stage 2 within 3 turns. This means you have to kill Nidhogg for the first time in two turns. As for the second one, advance to stage 3 within 6 turns. That means in 5 turns, you have to kill off all of the slimes after you've killed Nidhogg. So basically, in other words, you have 2 turns to do the first phase and then 3 turns to do the second phase. Um, Poison Blood Strike Phase 4 requires you to kill Nidhogg for the second time in 9 turns. I have no way of achieving this one, in my opinion. But the first two, I feel, can definitely be done at this time. I can keep in mind that these are achievements, kind of like the missions, so you don't have to do them at this time, right? It's just like missions, they stay like those challenges and feats. The only limitation is that you can only do these achievements when the fight is available. So since this fight only comes once per month, I might as well at least finish off these first two to get those 8 SSR uh, Super Mastery Stones to use. For the party that I'm going to use, I've adjusted things quite a bit. Uh, first of all, I am going to bring my 4 star Rachel. She is only 4 stars, but her bonds I've been upgrading quite a bit. It's uh, her now her strength bond is at level 9 and her heart bond is level 7. So next time Nidhogg comes around, I will definitely have her fully bonded and probably with a stronger toughness bond so that she can be part of my main party because I really do need a third attacking healer, right? And Rachel is by far the best one to use for this fight. So that's why Rachel is being built up and my goal is to get her to five stars just for this fight. Other than Rachel, um, who I have given Lana's primary gear set, so Breeze Enchant and so on. Lana herself will now have her Black Bride set with a Clocks Enchant. 
So, the blue moon with 13% int with 9 int increase. You know, the black bride. Uh, a dark crown with 2% int increase. And then a holy ring with 9% int increase. I really should try to reroll this enchant, but I've run out of clocks enchants, basically. Um, so, eventually, I'll probably reroll it for in hopes of getting 5% int increase on that. But, not at this time. So, that is Lana's gear. So, I'm not going to bring Listel, basically, replacing her, because she was a... Overall, she was a very low damage dealer for me in this fight. So, it'll be Lana, it will be Rachel, and then the rest of my party will pretty much be as is. One thing I should mention is that Tieris has had a massive gear change for this fight. Because in order for me to clear the first phase in two turns, I need luck. Specifically, I need to apply the Sharon effect or to reduce uh, the damage received by Nidhogg early on so that I can do additional damage to him. So I need either Sharon to activate or I need to attack him and have all their staff activate. Right. Every turn, I will need this additional damage increase from the Sharon or all their staff. And I'm also going to need to apply a magic damage reduction debuff onto Nidhogg. So, and that will hopefully come from Lana's Black Bride. Uh, just in case, I also gave Liana a Warlock's Hood instead for uh, the chance to reduce the magic defense of Nidhogg by 30%. So, oh, it's a bit awkward because it's not a level 50 one. I actually don't have enough gold to upgrade this level 50. So, the first turn debuffs is going to really determine whether this whole strategy works. So, with all that mentioned, let's jump into the battle now. And I am, as I mentioned, because it's so luck-based, the first turn I'm probably going to have to restart several times. So I'm going to basically cut in a successful attempt into this video. Alright, so I'm going to go over my party against Nidhogg in detail before I begin the fight. First, I have Narm with Aim, Snipe, and Roundabout. The main reason I'm bringing Narm in Truth is because... Actually, I'm going to replace the Snipe with Deadeye for additional damage. The reason I'm bringing Narm though is primarily because she has my King's Crown. I only have one. If I had two so that I had one on Luna, I would not need to bring Narm. Other than that, everything is about damage increase and damage decrease in order for me to kill Nidhogg in two turns. I have Luna bringing Gale in hopes of getting act again to attack Nidhogg several times. Right. Tiaris has the Sharon to debuff Nidhogg right from the start, and then Lana has the Black Bride to hopefully debuff Nidhogg's magic defense so everyone can do more damage. So there's a lot of luck triggers involved for me to kill Nidhogg in two turns, and I'm going to have to try this multiple times, so the successful attempt will be the one that is shown. Alright, so with all that said, oh, and finally, Liana, rather than bringing Prayer, she's actually going to bring a single target strike skill as well, in hopes of helping to kill off Nidhogg early. And I'm going to just swap Lana's position with Rachel, just in hopes, because what I've noticed is Nidhogg seems to attack the target that's uh, on the right side, I think. So I'm hoping that Nidhogg will choose to target Lana over Rachel with this setup. So, with all that covered, let's begin the battle. Alright, so the very first step is I need Sharon to activate on Nidhogg. So I'm going to attack Blessing Lana, and the luck trigger occurred. Now, I need a second luck trigger, which is Lana to apply the correct uh, debuff on Nidhogg. But before that, I'm going to start with Narm, who is going to aim to King's Crown Lana. Shift over to the right, or to the left, to buff up Rachel, and attack, and then retreat. Uh, 
And now, I begin the attack with Lena in hopes of those luck triggers. So let's start with a Dark Reaper here. Come on, magic defense reduction. Didn't happen, unfortunately. But I need that to occur. For now though, I'm going to act again. Lena, and hopefully the luck trigger will occur from Warlock's Hood, which didn't either. So, so far, not good. So let's try attacking again with Lena, hoping yet again for a luck trigger. That occurred. So there we go. For the second attack, I successfully reduced the magic defense by 30% from Black Bride. So we'll continue. So, Rachel is going to Dark Reaper. Nidhogg doing some extra damage due to the reduced magic defense on Nidhogg and I'm going to have Luna Wind Spiral and Raging Thunder and now Lena was attacked so doing some good retaliation damage. So you can see it's down to 230k hit points. Pretty much in range of what I was hoping. And now I need to once again apply damage reduction effect on Nidhogg. So I am going to range attack with Tiaris who has an Ulver staff giving me two chances to debuff Nidhogg's with damage received. So there we go. Damage taken plus 20%. So now I continue swarming with everyone. Then. So let's have Narm jump in and use her dead eye attack skill. And then have Vienna. Windblade Nidhogg. Rachel? With her lightning strike now? Lena? With her freeze strike? And then Luna? With a melee attack? manages to finish off Nidhogg. So you can see, tons of luck triggers required. Although Luna didn't activate Gale at all. But he was killed in two turns. And now I have to kill all of these slimes in three turns. So this is the part where I'm not sure I can do, in truth. I'll try my best, but it's going to be very, very much a luck-based scenario. So... Let's start with an Arcane Blast on all those slimes. And have Lana follow up by tossing up Black Hole. Narm has a damage dealt plus 30% buff on her. So she is going to range attack, get rid of a slime. And back off. Luna? Can also wipe out a slime right away. Or leave it barely alive, as the case may be. Tiaris is going to miracle up everyone on that side. And Liana is completely out of the fight, so let's have her just run away.
This is rough for me because I don't have any extreme magic bows on Marm, for example. But I think I will be on track to wipe out all of these slimes with this kind of formation. At the very least, Luna is doing a great job killing them off one by one. Alright, so here... I'm going to begin with another black hole. to wipe out these two slimes up here. Oh wow, killed more slimes than I thought. Which actually wasn't necessarily a good thing, but at least most of my characters survived that. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is have Tierra seal. Rachel will wipe the pot with another slime. And Luna is going to wind spiral and attack. And so, with this. The last slime is killed on turn 5. And I got that itchy so, At this point, I've already lost two characters, so I can't, clearly, can't go for that next achievement, right? And to be fair, I mean, you're given... It is doable if all my characters were alive, because at this point, you have four turns to kill off Nidhogg, right? And those four turns is just one, two, three, right? I normally kill Nidhogg in four turns, regularly. So as long as all your characters are alive for this wave, you can get that third achievement. Unfortunately, two of my characters just didn't have enough hit points to survive all those AoE blasts, right? And that basically killed my attempt, but I still got those first two achievements, and it shows that the third one, Advanced to Stage 4 within, within 10 turns, is perfectly doable too, depending on the amount of hit points that is on your Narm and on your Len. So what that means is... I'm not going to try for that achievement at this time, but in the future, right, if I re-roll more for better enchants on Narm and Lena, specifically if, for example, Narm has some of these buffs with hit points, right, then she would be able to survive. And then I won't have to re-roll any of these enchants and get that achievement. And as for Lena, well, Lena will just need more hit points. Uh, I'm just gonna have to figure that one out because I think she's actually rather lacking in hit point upgrades right now, right? Yeah, so for example, in her case as well, if I give her more hit points from these masteries, I can certainly get that feat. 
So there we go. Luck-based, very, very much a luck-based situation to get this to work. But once you have strong enough characters, it will definitely allow you to get all the Poison Blood Strike achievements. So thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you found this useful. I'm actually going to open those chests that I just got at this point and see exactly what I got from them. And there we go. So four hit point buffs, two defense buffs, one super inf buff, which is useless for infantry and lancers, but one precious, precious attack buff. Actually, all of these are quite useful, especially the hit point ones and the super attack one. Defense is okay, and super int is useless. So I can't complain about the, the items I got there. And at this point... So, next month is when I personally will get the next achievement, which is Poison Blood Strike Phase 4. Thanks for watching, everyone. And on that note, Nitro out.